little girl Mickey Jane just said, and we started a little over a year ago to combat stereotypes and really get like our voices heard and also create a platform for Muslim women of color, women of color, uh, youth, and really get what we had to, what we had to say out there. So today we'll be doing some poems for you and then doing some Q and A as well. So we're going to kick it off with welcome. Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay, so. Right. So uh, we want to teach you guys uh, some a couple of sun rules and some chants that we learned. So uh, one sun rule that we'd like to point out is that when you hear our poems and you hear like a line you resonate with or like a line that was really well said, uh, just snap. Um, yeah, that really encourages us. So that's like during, after, whatever you're just feeling. Yeah, and so we like to teach you guys some chants. Um, we learned this. Um, we learned them at Brave New Voices. Which is an uh, international poetry competition we went to last summer. And so the first one goes You put your heart into it. I know you did. I know. So if you guys want to say that, one, two, three. You put your heart into it. I know you did. I know. And the second one, we just like to play you guys from fun. So Don't be Becky, Beyonce. <laughs> Don't be Becky, Beyonce. Teenage Odyssey, 
Greek legend narrates that years ago, Sisyphus, son of Aeolus and Anarchy, was punished by the god. Sent to the deepest level of Tartarus, he was forced to ceaselessly roll a rock to the top of the mountain. Every day the rock would fall back on its own weight, and he would do it again, and again, and again. Pain is carrying the weight of the world as punishment. Pain is suffering in silence. Pain is knowing your story is mundane. Pain is holding the burden of $1.3 trillion in debt on the back of our generation. We have lost our childhood. It is now a sea of confusion. This ill-fitted life jacket barely looking up to the surface as ropes of despair hold us at the ankles. Every setback, a sabotage, disguised as a glimmer of hope, a gasp of air. The weight of poverty sends millions to the bottom of the ocean. Oppression only adds to the hopelessness. We can no longer tolerate the price tags of our education. How do you expect us to go after a dream so big? It encompasses everything in its path. So bright, it's blinding. Our lives, constant expectations, never whole, never certain. Our parents say one thing, society says another, and in the midst of all this, we lose ourselves. We conform to the perfect applicant. Our test scores determine our self-worth. Our GPAs are our ticket to opportunity. Our extracurriculars are the cherry on top. When do we get to? And allow the air to reach the depths of our accomplishments. To fully fill our lungs with oxygen. For the first time, knowing what it feels like to be full, without a whiff of dread of an empty application, a tightening noose around our neck. What does it mean to act without a resume, creeping in the back of our minds like growing ivy, poisoning everything it touches? Can we do things because of what we do? We do learn from we learning. We look at our lives like a time lapse video. Moments blurring together until we've forgotten what it means to be human, to reflect, to live vulnerable, to learn for learning, to do for feeling, to be because that's who we are. When will we stop competing with each other and realize the accomplishment of a fear is not a threat to our success, that upliftment is more than a feminist saying, it's a way of life. When will we learn authenticity to apply in the spaces most needed, beyond the 500 words of a college essay? Prompt. Some students have a passion or skill they would be incomplete without. Please share your story. Response. Every day the rock falls back to place, and every day we wake to a new day of college application. And every day we just the stone to the top of the mountain. Again.
quick little disclaimer before we start. Uh, I just like to point out this is a cultural issue, not a religious one. Many people think it's religious because we wear the hijab, but I just wanted to point that out. Towel head, mop, washcloth. Do I look like a cleaning supply to you? Do I leave your floor squeaky clean? I mean, yeah, I do. Right, mom? Okay, fine. The truth is, we just watch a nice episode of Orders and think, damn, our house looks great. The laundry's done. I done did the dishes. I got you so much that my basket house break. Talk about 13 going on 30. Woo! This is slavery. I already did my time. Why are women's hands meant to crack the art of cooking, cleaning? Boy, I even do babysitting. Is it because mom sounds like mom? Is the kitchen the only home for our mothers with their no welcome mats for fathers? Why does the stove bring comfort like a fireplace only when the food is done? Open your eyes, because us women have bared this heat much longer than that. The gates of hell have been opened much longer than that. This heat has forced our ancestors' skin so much so that it has braved itself in ours. This is our bloodline. We do not take the names of our husbands, but the burdens of our mothers. Our brothers are taught to clean, but we guarantee for women upon the womb. Why do women receive no credit? Do the creases in our hands not allow for justice, equality? Does this sweat not mean hard work? Is it just casualty? Does this blood not remind you of the aftermath of a genocide? We serve men as if this is worship, as if a temple allows for the crack bones of a servant. Haven't you heard? A slave is only wanted if they are useful, strong enough, helps a master uphold his status. To you, I hold nothing but the rank of my father, that my labor molds his happiness. Is this what it means to be a real woman? As if nothing else matters? As if 2017 kitchen still come with the warning sign, never let your son or husband enter. A line repeated over and over and over again that has become a promise, an expectation, a ticket to womanhood. This is what it looks like to be a woman, to be rewired back to the same routine but still tick, tick, Translation, nothing stays the same. 
she was right. I quickly realized my peers could not understand the tongue my parents gave me as a gift, so I quickly washed it away with the English alphabet, forgetting the only language my family knew. I was embarrassed whenever my friends mocked my mother's broken down English, destroying my dignity whenever she spoke, so I made fun of her too. I hated my Egyptian skin. It was screaming while the white flesh surrounding me were silent. I was different. I carried two cultures like it was a burden, so I tried like going of one, but I couldn't. Instead, others tried to get rid of one for me by telling me I'm not American. My skin is too dark for the American flag, so I laughed. My red lips carving around my white teeth, causing blue tears to run down my cheeks. It's funny because they don't realize that this soil is mine. This American flag is mine. This birth certificate is mine. My family thinks I'm too American, and America thinks I'm too much like my family. I sit in the battle of Egyptians mocking my broken down, watered down, beaten down Arabic, while my fellow Americans swing at the epitome of my blood thigh while whispering in my ears that I do not belong, I blame my parents. Blame them for bringing me into a country that already hated me before I hated myself. I was a girl who carried no country. I let others name me in their own language until I forgot every word of my own, and I chose to follow them. And now, when the doctors draw my blood, I feel the pain of my parents leaving the country they once loved. They came to America to give me a blue passport for freedom. And now people laugh when I say I'm from here, making me feel like a dead girl that has been poured back into my body. People come to me and ask me which I hold first, Egyptian or American. I did not know I had to choose one over the other because to you, I can never be both, but I am. And I dance on the soil of my country without tripping over my skin, dance to the sound of, dancing to the sound of others mocking me, but I do not listen. Laughing at the humor of ignorant Americans naming me as I will, but I do not forget. I do not forget that a plan needs its root to go stronger. I remember the distance from my family's blood and the open sky. I remember that I do not lie, but face the aesthetic truth, and that I can run my hands on my strong skin without the consent of others, without having to seek approval, remembering that this is me, that I carry the history of two countries without any burden, that I love my parents for bringing me into a country full of faith so I can create hope. And now, my grandmother's words replay in my Translation, nothing stays the same. And she was right. Because I am no longer a girl who hates herself. I am a girl who will throw hands at a single soul that was recorded on my mother's door up and down in I'm a girl who no longer ignores her beautiful culture in a country that wants to get rid of it. I'm a girl who loves her Egyptian skin unconditionally, who could lift the weight of two cultures without getting tired, who can be American in an Egyptian body. We love you so much. Look at me. 
I'm not only black, I'm Muslim. I brush those terrorist jokes off my back, but all the body is connected in front of the back is the heart, so you may not see it. My heart just died away. And yes, these are jokes that you and your friends whisper as if I'm blind, deaf, mute. Honey, I would respond if I could, but I have been taught that silence is sometimes better. But I can't stay silent when Islam is our new unit in school. <clears throat> Did you need help pronouncing the words Quran, Hajj, and Allah? By the way, it's Quran, Hajj, and Allah. My point is, when I'm not running away from the silence warning me, get away, you don't belong because you're black, I'm running away from the voices telling me you clearly don't belong, you're Muslim. I'm convinced that there are two TV screens in my house, and when one is off, the other automatically goes on. You see, white folks never hesitate to tell black Muslim people who they are and what they do. Sometimes I shift my weight to one side of the scale because I appreciate one part of me over the other. Will I ever appreciate both simultaneously? It's hard enough being one color, one person, one identity. Imagine being two. I know this is not a cry for help because you had your chance, but you didn't. This isn't some child screaming for attention because you didn't dare look. This is not just a poem informing you of what you do because you already know. This is me telling you that my life isn't Hannah Montana. It's not the best of both worlds. This is me telling you that my voice is the only thing that matters. And I'm going to use my voice to tell you I'm both black, Muslim, in a world where it's hard, no, exhausting to find balance. balance. <laughs> Wake up, up, America. 
America